Yeah. Best program slot of the evening, 10 p.m. This was supposed to be at five, in addition to four other English-speaking programs, which was shit. So, so I mailed Kaisa, and she, she gave me this one, which is way better, <laughs> because it's at 10. And uh, yeah, originally, my thesis on LARP cooking is that you have to have three things which you absolutely cannot screw up, which is that, number one, there needs to be enough food in a LARP. Number two, it needs to be on time. If you say it's at five, it can be at 5.10, but it can't be at 5.30. And number three, it, it, it can't be cold, unless it's supposed to be cold, when it's okay. But if you serve cold food, which is not supposed to be cold, it's, it's AKA a shit idea. So, let's move on. LARP cooking, what's it all about? I had a really, really cool quote by Gandhi, not by actually Gandhi, I just made a quote up and quoted it to Gandhi, but it was a bit cheesy, so I went with this. So people have to eat so they can do the thing they came to do, which is LARP. That's kind of the premise of which I usually am requested. To those who don't know me, hello, I'm Vemeli Miettinen, I'm the person who does the food. <laughs> most of the food, most of the games. Lots of people have probably eaten something I've made and they are still alive, so that speaks to my ability. <laughs> and that the thesis is that food can be a big part of the game, but mostly it, is, it, it really isn't. It's something you do so you can LARP. But still, uh, the fact that there is food is a necessary part of the game. I'll also be speaking about why, which is one of my theses that I'm going to do today and present on, well, why. So... I'm going to present, following my three golden rules from 2014, yes, looking at you, Temo, um, the most common mistakes made are relating to these seven categories. It was six categories to begin with, but I had just had to add number six because I got fed up with that at some point. And um, I'm going to go through with these uh, one by one, pretty much. Because, well, food is something you make. Food is something you don't really think about when you make the game. You're making Odysseus, the LARP in space. You're making uh, something about dragons. You're making whatever. You don't think about, yeah, yeah, the people will eat something. That's all right. But, but food is important because if the people won't eat, they won't LARP. That's one of my big things, which is number seven. And these are the continuation biggest mistakes what people usually tend to make. Number one being the biggest one. I've made each and every one of these mistakes myself. Usually only once I learn from one time, but not necessarily from one time, but most, most of the time I learn from one time of screwing up horribly and at once set, setting myself on fire for real skis. Uh, but that's for my tomorrow's program, so I'll tell more about that at that point. It was a hoot and a half. So, I'll start with number one. Mistakes with the venue and equipment. Right, do's and don'ts. These are the questions that people usually don't ask themselves because they're like, hey, there's a kitchen. That's all right. I make food in a kitchen every day. So, what, nobody asks what's a kitchen like because usually when you make food at a LARP, you make it for 40 people, you make it for 60 people, you make it for 150 people. Usually when you do it at home, there's rarely 40 people or 150 people. So what's the kitchen like? I've done that mistake many times. And you really have to find out what the kitchen's like. Is it a big one? It, what's the cold storage level? Are there equipment for what you're going to make? What's the warm storage level? Because warm storage is something you never think about when you're actually making food. You, the fuck is warm storage? Anybody, anybody go... A slight idea of what it is. Also cold and oven. Yeah, well, well, yeah, but then you're using the oven, so what are you going to do the potatoes with? Good yeah, there you go. So warm storage. It's usually something you keep the food warm in while you make the other food. Cutlery, is it usable or is it what I call Lady Keskus Lato in Finnish? <laughs> uh, that's why I usually bring my own knife because Lady Keskus Lato, meaning like. Uh, well, it's, it's slightly more pointy than a butter knife, but not much. <laughs> Clean as you go. Anybody got an inkling what that means? There you go. Because otherwise you're going to have a big mess and also you're going to be angry. 
Yes. That's one of the things I really learned when I started cooking in LOPs with people who are professionals. I had several people who are professionals in the restaurant industry or the cooking industry, whatever you call it, and I'm not a professional. And I learned clean as you go by, well, mostly by people screaming at me, but not doing it, but still. So clean as you go means like basically keeping your working area up to scratch so that you can actually do stuff. So you don't have seven pans and that spatula used for the sauce. And then there's like tomato on the plate and the cutting board and there's people allergic to tomato. So fuck, I screw up. And also check the equipment because um, otherwise you'll end up in, I've, I've been in this situation. If, if anybody's been to Kasisali in, in Lahti, which is 100 kilometers from Helsinki is a game venue, which is usually used for raves. And as you know, people don't usually eat at raves or something like that. So uh, the food was um, chicken breast. Pretty easy, pretty standard, you know. What's the big thing about chicken breast if you make that for 100 people? Yeah, not cold chain. In Finland, yeah, dry. That's good. That's good. But the most thing, big thing, is that it takes like forty minutes in an oven to cook, and the oven was like this. <laughs> that was it for the entire fucking venue. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, today we'll have chicken breast in this oven for fun. One hundred people. Can you guess how many chicken breast that oven took? Is at at like if you stuff it full, Eight. like really porn movie stuff it full. They're like, like 15 tops. We had a, over 100 people, and it's always 40 minutes. And if you stuff it like porn movie full, it'll take like a t an hour and 15 minutes. So I think I got my food four hours after the LARP ended. I, I think. I mean, they could have rolled with the stovetop with the two rolling things over there with a pan. And I don't know, try to chop it up, but uh, do something, anything really. But that was just a basic mistake of not checking the equipment or the venue or the kitchen. Because there was a kitchen and the person in charge of food decided that because there is a kitchen, it is adequate. It was not. <laughs> So that's the mistakes of venue and equipment. And these are really easy. It takes five minutes of your time. If you're going to uh, like a camp center, they all got web pages and they always got a number for an old lady or an old bloke who's in charge of the place. You call them and you ask, what's the venue like? Because I'm going to make chicken breast for 100 people. And they're going to say it's going to be like this. So you're not going to make chicken breast. <laughs> number two. Also done the done my mileage on this one, recipe recipe logic fallacies, because um yeah you can see the first quote well the recipe calls for 400 grams of beef for four people so oh 10 people I should have wrote in, written 40 people see I have a fallacy right there so four people 400 grams 40 people 4,000 grams that's how it goes yeah does not. Recipe scale, but not on a straight track. That's um, another thing for tomorrow's program. I did blinis once. I think I still have one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Blini flower packages. That was in 2014, mind you. 16. Uh, it's four years ago. Bloody hell. Um, recipe scale, but not on a straight track. And cooking time changes a lot when you scale them up. Something I really, really, really should have known back in the day. Because it's like, I've always, uh, I have a friend, uh, Mikko Kari, who uh, we made food to a LARP once. And he said like, I tried this food at home and it was done in 15 minutes in the oven. So, ergo, it'll be done in 15 minutes here. It won't. I said him like five times it won't. It was kind of a root vegetable Thing with honey and oil in the oven. Really simple, really. You, you mix the root vegetables and you put them in the oven, presto, 15 minutes, it'll be done. It's like, <laughs> it won't be done. It'll be done in like 40 minutes, minimum. It's like, no, no, no. It wasn't done. It's like, the carrots will be raw. Oh, the carrots will be fine. They'll be al dente. Like, Your head will be al dente in 15 minutes. And he came to me, middle of the game, saying like, oh, the carrots weren't done in 15 minutes. I, said, I know. I know they weren't done in bloody 15 minutes because you did a 10 kilo batch. <laughs> because it was like, you could, you could drown a baby in that tub. And you're trying to do it in 15 friggin' minutes. It's this thick. 
The middle carrots won't even heat up in 15 minutes, let alone cook. Equal heating for large batches, yeah, better have good equipment. We had good equipment, like large-scale equipment, GN, metal, thrusts, and everything. And lastly, oh, this is my personal favorite, especially with vegetarian foods, like I can, oh, can replace X with Y, no problemo. Anybody have this? <laughs> yeah. Soy bolognese. <laughs> it's wonderful. You replace the minced meat with soy. Tastes exactly the same, eh? No. <laughs> Tastes like watery cardboard. <laughs> it does, it really does taste like watery bloody cardboard. So never go with X with Y because, and this is the kicker, is that their recipes are like that for a reason. The guy who, or gal who did the recipe did it for a bloody reason. So if you go off track, if you're like, I can make this with carrots instead of zucchini, and you use the same cooking time, you're going to have a mess. Because the carrots won't be done. Getting hung over on that one. Next one. Personal favorite. Personal favorite. Done this many times. The Hans Valley syndrome. If anybody's not familiar with Hans Valley Mackey, he's a, like a big, big chef guy. Not like one of those um, celebrity chefs. He's more like a have myself a couple of Michelin star restaurant chefs and do these uh, for the main course we'll have hand decorated swans caught out of turnips with a side of medium rare beef and demi glass from scratch and then you go to the uh, knock, 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 this one <laughs> <laughs> yeah yep. there we go and all this in six hours for 40 people in a kitchen meant to feed pea soup to 20 youths because most of LARP venues in Finland are like campsites, Leirikesku style places. They're not meant for hand carved turnips into swans with whatever level of rarity you, you prefer. They're actually meant for well, pretty basic stuff. So most people, yeah. For most people, LARP food's something you can eat so you don't die and continue the LARP. And people get over ambitious. And they have an idea because they had this great recipe and they did it in 15 minutes at home. <laughs> and they did it in 40 minutes and it was really good. So it's just scale up, yeah, no problem. I can replace that, it's all right. You can't. And um, the syndrome is identified if you ever talk to the people in charge of catering after the venue. Like right after the game's ended, the best place to do this is in the sauna because I can't run off. Because the floor's slippery and if they run, they'll fall down and die. So you do that. So you're like, oh, so how did the food go? You know it didn't go good. So you're, so you're already prepared. You ask a question like, so how did the food go? And they start with, yeah, well, we had this kind of plan. and I should have done this and I should, should have done that. It's like, yeah, you should have. But you didn't. You did, you did the 15-minute one. You did the... Uh, the swans can't have the turnips. You might get the swans can't have the turnips, but the beef won't be bloody medium rare. And demi glace will be from a box in six hours. And it's okay to cheat, really. Rare people actually give a damn if your sauce is made from scratch or if it's made from, from stock. Usually do it from stock. I do it from stock. It's cheating. Cheating is fine. The point is to get them fed, not to do some sort of ending project for your five-year culinary career training track where you get marks at the end with five people holding numbers over their heads. The point is to get them fed. Like I said, LARP food is something you eat so they don't die and you continue the actual thing, which is the LARP. It can be a lot more, but most of the time it, it's not. Issues of time. This is also a big one. I've Usually, I, I, I end up in this situation because I also, in addition to making food at LARPs, I make other stuff. Oh, I can do other stuff. They come to the kitchen like, oh, yeah, you know how to use an electric drill. It's like, yes, I was not trained by monkeys. <laughs> so can you come and drill this thing? And Because I'm a, I'm a nice bloke, I usually do it, and then it costs. It's like a quick thing. You go there, you do this, it's done. And you come back and you realize, oh, that's 30 minutes. You do this like five times, you help up a person staple some fabric onto a wall and you, you help up cover the TV because all the venues have a TV and there's no TVs in Narnia. So you put them up and it's like, oh, 
the tape is failing. And then you realize, oh, that's another 30 minutes. That's another, another hour of my time gone. Oh, I can do this tomorrow. That's another favorite of mine. Because you can't. You can't do this tomorrow because tomorrow you'll be taping up the TV if you didn't do it today. There's always not enough people, not enough time. Actually doing prep is really important. I usually do like, if I do catering, I do until 3 a.m. Because I stay up late. And once you get the flow going, it's kind of easy to keep it going. And I hate waking up at 6 to make sauce because, because I'm asleep at 6. There's two six o'clocks in one day. The day's ruined. So you can do you if you can if you think I can do this tomorrow. You have one. You get one pass, like a single item. If you have like four items or like I usually do buffets. So if eleven items on the menu, you can have one item for that one. That's your that's your pass card. You can go to the sauna two instead of four because you can do the sauce tomorrow. But you better have everything else done. I have time, yeah, yeah. Covered that one right on the before one. Yes, and oh, my personal favorite. I've been really anxious about this one. It seems when I wrote these these slides. Yeah, and it's a really important thing to remember that you're there there to do the catering, not help with the makeup, not to decorate the venue, not to brief players because you wrote five characters because you couldn't get anybody to write the characters. So, okay, I'll write the five characters and not do my job, which is doing the catering. You're there to do the catering. And it's really hard, especially for me, since I'm, I like helping people. I like getting things done. And usually game masters are really stressed, like overstressed. And they're jumping around the walls because the TV is uncovered. And everything is wrong. And you're not that stressed out. You're doing the food. You like doing the food. So you're like, yeah, I can help. But that's kind of doing yourself a disservice. And the game a disservice because um, it makes them look good and you look bad. Because some of the food stuff you should have done while helping. And the other stuff didn't work out. Uber simplifying. Another favorite, Mike. And this, this is where we come to really, like I said previously, I said for most people, ops, food, something you eat, you know, die, etc. It can be a lot more. And here's where it comes something else. <laughs> Appetit. Here in my paprika, my favorite food item to throw out of the window of a moving car while moving to the venue. Because the only use for herne maisi paprika, which is peas, maize, and paprika, is to use if you don't want to use ice packs for moving stuff to the venue. You can use that, but yeah. Food's not important at a LARP, but it is significant enough that it can break the game, it can break the immersion, it can break everything if it's that. <laughs> I've been to, I was in a LARP, which is a really good catering place, and I... The food person in charge of catering was just somebody who uh, the game master had asked, like, hey, can you do the food? Because it's Thursday. And the game's on Friday. <laughs> it's like, shit, hell oh, yeah. So I can do that. And it was a Japan-themed game, like a Legend of the Five Rings, magical Japan, people in really cool props. I had my kimono on and I had my swords and everything, and the food was here in my sip up with, uh, <laughs> with rice. <laughs> And if you're really, really into, like, eating dead animals, bits of ham. And I mean, it's not... Well, there, there, there was the rice. <laughs> kind of fits. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, with, like, one hour of thinking. You could have just had the rice. You could have had the god-awful frozen veggies. As a side, you could have had the ham slice it thin you can maybe have like soy sauce and sugar made a sauce out of it plate it really nicely it looks fantastic but you just mix mash them up aka pea soup at the queen's feast been there done that pea soup at the queen's feast hurrah paper plates <laughs> swanky as fuck paper plates oh that's a good one 
Yeah, yeah, you're there to do catering for a project that you ain't getting paid for by people who do it, ain't getting paid for by people who pay just the right amount so they can get there for 30 euros plus the 5 euros gas fee, which is atrocious because you shouldn't have to pay for gas. And um, you shouldn't stretch your limits and burn out, really. You're there to ensure that they can actually enjoy the game, enjoy the immersion. But you shouldn't break the immersion or just wing it with whatever. That's kind of, kind of a problem. And um, also, uh, never trust small stores. Also been there. I can't remember if I had it in these slides, but people have this really, really weird idea that if they're making herne maisi paprika for 60 people, the local store, which is about the size of those two chairs over there, <laughs> maybe this booth will have 60 bags of it. Yeah. And then they go to the store and like, yeah, you what? And then they raid the store and it looks like Soviet Union in the 1988 <laughs> after they leave. Like, yeah, I've got all the bread for the week. <laughs> done that, done that. Yeah, it's, it's fun, it's fun, but it's... Uh, don't, don't rely on the local store. If it's something you can easily get beforehand from whatever store, like a big one, like a Prisma. Also, I've done the Soviet Union simulation in a Prisma as well. Large game, 150 people. But um, if you can do it, really do it. And only rely on small stores for something. If you, if you get to the venue, you start your cooking, you're starting on item X, and you're like, oh, shit, I need, I need this. I need more carrots. And it has to be really simple. Then you can get one of the, the goons for the, the game. Every game has goons. Get one of the goons. Usually it's my wife who does, who does the gooning. And it's like... Go to the nearest store and get me five kilos of bananas. You can do that. Oh, bugger. The uh, thing only screwed up my slides. Now the gross green slimy things are on top of the text. But, well, it says not doing it. So don't do gross stuff, which is cool and edgy, in-game, and have it be the only food. Also been there, also done that, thought, oh, this is really cool. We're going to have prisoners. They're going to be prisoners. They're going to be prisoners for the entire game, and they need to suffer. <laughs> so we's going to serve pea soup. But we're only going to use one can of pea soup and three times the amount of water. I totally did not do a catering for a prison game and served them green oatmeal. Yeah. I, my, my forever haunting memory is a Bravo Beach Lab where they're... But they, hey, they... they Disclaimer, they did it correctly because the the dessert was called the green stuff, which was the green stuff, which was a I don't know, pudding of some sort. Basically just sugar and uh, cornstarch, water, green food additive, vanilla extract and oh God, I don't know, crushed up Teletubbies, but still it looked, it looked, it looked horrible. I was like, guys, I'm not eating that. Ooh. So, but that was a good thing because it was not the only food. It was actually an in-game joke, like don't eat the pudding, <laughs> and the, those those crushed aliens in the pudding. And it, actually, it worked really well for the game. But if that would have been it, nobody would have eaten the bloody pudding. And ooh. like these things uh, on the lower hand corner, these are actually not from a LARP, but close because everybody was in costume. It's for a New Year party we did two years back. There was actually, uh, you guys know surimi, what surimi is, like, like imitation crab. Those are imitation crab thingies made to look like shrimp. And we, because it was a Star Wars themed party, we were like, oh, this is cool. I'm going to dye them green. Actually, because, uh, and this is the kicker, that they all went, <laughs> everything was eaten, but we, yeah, well, we served alcohol there, so kind of saved the day because I, I looked at the the metal vat of blue and green slightly scummy steamy thingies like Ooh. but hey we put them in tomato sauce and we put little green sprigs on top so yeah and we started off with the sparkly wine so that's the real reason for eating everything number six this I have to add this because allergy allergy dodgathon is something you have to do even though, because uh, I, I, I don't know if how many of you read. <laughs> it's a thing they teach in school. I, I, wrote a, I wrote a blog about it. 
about FODMAP. <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's, it's really nice. You don't have to like wean out your Facebook friends. It does it for you. Just write a blog, you lose 30 people. Write another blog, you lose another 50. It's like, oh, it's, like it's, it's doing its own job. Amazing, but really, allergies are actually pretty simple because in Finland, because of the gaming culture, the people who have allergies are usually really nice about it. Get like emails like, I'm sorry, I'm allergic to crab, I'll die. It's like, that's not your fault. <laughs> I mean, you didn't choose it, that character creation. Like, I'm going to take a 2% feet for that one. Yep. And then you can go like, how do you not know this? And it's like, well. But most common allergens in Finland are tomato, chili, which is not really an allergy in most cases. It is an allergy in most cases, but it's easy to avoid. Uh, unless you're doing a Mexican themed lap. <laughs> then you can be like, oh, we we're just going to have pico de gallo today. <laughs> Soy, which is increasing, it's actually not an allergen as well, but is to do with FODMAP, which is kind of a bummer because it's cheap and you can use it to replace a lot of stuff if you like the taste of cardboard. You can actually you can do a lot of stuff with soy. But uh, the trick about that is using marinades and time and actually thinking about it instead of replacing it. Wheat gluten, which is usually about three to five people in a game. Not bad. You can usually, if, it's, uh, if it fits the theme, you can just skip it all together. But people always want breakfast for some obscure reason, known only to the Elder Gods, because I wake up at 11 every day, which is the time for lunch. But, um, yeah, people want breakfast and... Is bread and porridge. This is Finland. Everybody wants bread and porridge for some obscure reason. So, yeah, loaded with gluten. And raw things, which is really easy. Usually most of an allergen list for a game consists of like 17 different items, 12 of which are raw X, like raw carrots, raw apples, raw kiwi, some from like raw pineapple, yeah. And these are really easy. You can even serve them in a game. You can serve raw pineapple in a game if it's like in big chunks. If it's like smashed up really, really nice to put some taste into the soy bolognese, you're going to have an ambulance at the place if you don't say it up. But yeah, raw things are really easy because if you serve them in some sort of salad, if you serve them straight up, the people who are allergic are really good at dodging them. Hence, allergy dodgeathon. It's actually not something you have to do as a caterer. It's usually what the people do themselves. I'm going to talk about this some more tomorrow. But the uh, easiest way to kind of dodge all the allergies is to make a buffet. Requires a lot of work, but it's really easy. You can just make anything. You, you can make wheat, gluten, soy, chili, tomato pasta. Because the people who are allergic will dodge it. Yeah, well, yeah, you'll, be able to, you'll go to another room. <laughs> uh, I've tried. On that note, also nuts. Yeah, nut, nut, yeah, nuts are actually, uh, well, name two food items which are common in LARPs which contain nuts. There we go. They usually don't. Nuts are actually not a big thing since that you, if you have nuts, you serve them in A, salads, B, on their own, or... Yeah. You just... I don't really use nuts in any food because they're not actually that important. They're a good source of protein, but they're pretty expensive and LARPs run on these big budgets, as we all know. Um, <laughs> you can just toss money around. It's like, yeah. 30 euros for a kilo for a packet of cashew nuts. He's like, I'll bring me five kilos. I have 150 euros to spare for that one. I know we had one. You always get one in the audience who knows that one. I know. Yeah, well. We will call them allergenic items. In general. That's actually not a big thing. Nuts are easy because people who are allergic to nuts. I never met a person who is allergic to nuts. Is like oh, I had a nut. I feel a bit unwell. If you have a person who is allergic to nuts who has nuts, you know, because they're on the floor making these wild gaspy thingies while the ambulance drives to the, to the yard. <laughs> they're really, really careful about it. They ask, "Is there nuts in this one?" Because am I gonna do the whirly girly thing? 
And your answer, so nuts are actually not a problem because they're usually severe allergies, so people who are allergic to nuts are really conscious about them. Number two, preferences are not allergies. And this is not for the people who sign up for LARPs. That is a whole different lecture I'm going to have someday. But um, they're not your problem. You're doing the catering. If somebody says, I don't like mushrooms, it's like, okay. <laughs> well, we're going to have mushrooms anyway because <laughs> you're one guy and we've got 49 others. Yeah, if it's your only food, it's kind of a bummer. They can always pick the mushrooms out, but yeah. Preferences are not allergies. Uh, remember when you're doing your queries for the LARP to have allergies and preferences separated because if there's only one field where you can submit information, people are going to go, olives. I've never actually met a person who's allergic to olives. I, I'm pretty sure there are people who are allergic to olives. There are people who are allergic to water, I guess. But still, I never met a person who's allergic to olives but they're the most common item found on the list. In addition to mushrooms and um, raw onion for some reason. I think I am is not your problem. It's their problem. It is a problem. Obviously, you want to make good food. You want to make people eat it. You want to have them enjoy the game. But it's not your problem. Your problem is the guy doing the whirly-girly things on the floor. <laughs> so that's actually a that's actually a health hazard. That's actually a problem. You need to take care of that. You don't want to make mistakes. But if somebody doesn't like olives, the most they're going to do is pick them out or not eat the food. FODMAP people are a thing that's up and coming. And despite my quite sarcastic blog posts about the subject, they're actually really easy because they're really apologetic. And they usually, if, if it's a complete no-go with the food. They usually bring their own food. You can give them the five euro discount of the game fee. It's kind of a pat on the back. I was like, okay, five euros. Nobody really gives a damn about five euros. But um, they tend to sort themselves out. Usually the big things are if you have no cabbage, if you have a soilless option, and no legumes, like beans. It's usually the big thing. You can dodge most of the, the stuff with that. And always, uh, because FODMAP people generally tend to like say what's okay for them. So you can go through the list in five minutes, and if you find a common denominator, use it. It's like, yes, nobody mentioned rice. <laughs> Gonna have rice and carrots in 15 minutes. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be ready real soon, really quick. And my last one, which is the biggest sin of all. I've never done this one personally because I was, I, I won't say way too smart. I was not stupid enough. So um, not doing it. We've had games with without food. I've been to games without food. And it's okay if it's a two-hour game and you go to a burger joint before that and a burger, burger joint after it. But not having food at a LARP that's actually a whole day LARP held in the middle of bumblefuck nowhere, where it's actually supposed to sleep in. Like, if you, if you have people rolling off to, like, 50 kilometers from Yoensu, yeah. So there's not a lot of kebab joints there. So uh, not doing food. Like, take care of your own food. You think about it. When you're actually doing it, you're doing the casting, you're doing the, the world building, you're doing the props, you're talking about the huge paper mache dragon you're going to build. It's like, yeah, they'll bring their own food. Yeah, most will. Most will. <laughs> but, but some won't. It doesn't really require many. It only requires, like, three people who didn't bring their own food. And they'll be a pain in the ass for the entire weekend. But the players will sort it out. They won't. They won't sort it out. Hungry people are a pain in the arse and LARPers tend to be children when it comes to self-care, really. Especially because you're so into the game. I, I know I'm like that. I get really into the game, like, yeah! I went to Poland four weeks ago, well, three weeks ago. I, uh, I ate a pack of crisps every day and had like three beers and be like, yeah, we're going to do this. And then I fall down and wonder why. But... Um, Luckily, I had good good people with me saying like you should eat something more than beer. And like beer is a food group, but it's not. A, <laughs> it's not a food group. Larpers tend to be children because they're focused in the game, they're focused in the the plot, the investment, they're focused in the character they're amassing. The last thing you want to think about is should I have some pea soup? It is the queen's birthday after all. 
Yeah. And the worst scenario that comes out of this is the 50 frozen pizza scenario. Does anybody have a care, of, an inkling of what that might be? Oh, Mila looks like, you know, yeah, you, you've done catering. What's the 50 frozen pizzas? Yeah, yeah, you got, you got fucking this. And 50, everybody brings their grandiosa salami pizza. And it's like, the first question is, they come to the kitchen like, the space in the fridge, eh? So what do you think you're number 48 out of 65 people who've asked that? The best you can hope for is a winter game. If it's not, well, well. And then, then, well, like, once again, 15 minutes per pizza. <laughs> Fuck yeah! There we go. 50 people like that. You're going to get your food at some point. Oh, and yeah. My favorite one. If you're not doing it, is that... I'm actually... Well, not in those words in the lower-hand corner, but pretty close. It's like people ask, like, is this knife used to cut asparagus? Like, Do I look like a new thing? So, like right now I'm wearing a shirt with pineapple, so I guess I do. But um, I'm allergic to X. And it actually can be a big problem. Because if you cut fish with a knife and you put it there and then the grandiosa salami guy comes in, you might have just enough residue to get the hurdy-gurdy motions and the, the ambulance on site. So you actually have to think about it. So not doing is it actually not a solution at all. It's a non-solution. And it leads to the questionable... Hangry thing. I really hate the word hangry, though. It, sounds, it makes everybody sound like they're fine. So like, what are you? I'm hangry. Why? Because the prince didn't eat. It's the queen's birthday, after all. So, <laughs> for Christ's sakes. Because it's, it's really easy to do basic food. You don't have to make it really spectacular. You don't have to make it really complicated. You just do something. Don't, for, by all means, don't, don't let them bring the 50 frozen pizzas. They will, they'll bring it anyway because they want to eat it after the game. Or before the game on Friday. That's the best part. You're, you're knee deep in, in whatever you're doing. And there's like 10 people with a bag and a meaningful expression. Like, you got any fridge space here? Yeah. Like... <laughs> This skull cup, skull, skull cup from the back door, like Gollum with the bag, is like, I got me grandioses here. It's like, shit. That's why I usually host my games in the winter. It's like, put it outside. It's minus 20 fucking million degrees. It's Finland in January. And they're like, okay, I'll be back in 15 for the oven. It's like, yeah. So those are the biggest mistakes. So to avoid these, this is really simple. As you notice, the allergies are not mentioned. You need like basic stuff to dodge the allergies. Really, really basic. And the people who have allergies are really conscious about it. So check the equipment, plan ahead, prepare contingencies. By prepare contingencies, I mean like, what if something fails? I usually buy like five kilos of rice to a game where I absolutely don't need it. In a best case scenario, I'm gonna use it in the next game for my five kilos of rice for the next game because it costs five euros to bring five kilos of rice. But if the potatoes are not done in 30 minutes because the oven looks like that in slide two, you can do rice on a stove. You can do rice really anywhere. Recipe scaling is not straightforward, but it's not rocket science. I'm, a, I'm an arts student, I'm an arts graduate. So case in point. It's not straightforward, but it's not that hard. You're there to do food, save the confit de canard for your anniversary dinner. Unless it's a LARP with confit de canard, because it is the Queen's birthday after all. And uh, <laughs> then you have to actually plan and think and do, but yeah, usually you take the time for that. It might come on Friday along with the first GM, but plan. Don't think you have time to do complex shit when you're there to do just shit. You will not have enough time if you think you have enough time. I'm usually surprised if I go to a venue to cater and I get to the sauna before two. I usually like to go to the sauna because after eight hours of standing on your feet and doing stuff, it's the best thing you can do actually before going to bed. If you just serve frozen vegan noodle, just stay home because I've been there, I've seen it. Just You don't need to use a lot of 
imagination. You call the GM, you have a 15-minute phone conversation on what the game's about. Then he says, okay, it's going to be about Japan. Then you do a quick Google search on Easy Recipes Japan. Then you go like, oh, and then you simplify it. That's like 45 minutes of work instead of serving herne maisi paprika. <laughs> crying out loud serve something, really. Been there too many times. There's a really easy chart. And uh, for the next item, I had a question slide, but for this... Oh, yeah, the potatoes. <laughs> I promised to, in the uh, blurb for the uh, program, to tell about why is it important not to leave potatoes unintended. I'm going to tell this tomorrow as well, my next program, so if you hear this, you don't have to come tomorrow. You're saved. Which is the fact that I was doing a catering for a LARP, Palu Muistoihin, in Finland, 2000-something-something. I'm going to go with 14 again since it seemed comfortable. And um, yeah, Nguyen Viet Jung was doing the catering. I was a logistics person and I was helping with the food. And we were supposed to do potato salad for Saturday afternoon. And we had 20 kilos of potatoes which were pre prepared, aka peeled raw potatoes. And we decided we'll, peel, uh, we'll chop the 20 kilos up. And since it was like 2 a.m. when we finished it, it was like, oh, well, we, we don't have time to do prepare the potato salad today. So we'll put them in water and put them over the fridge. At this point, the person came in asking like, okay, uh, how's the breakfast? We're going to serve it in six hours. It's 2 a.m. now. We're going to start it at 8. It's like, shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we haven't slept. Been here for nine hours. So um, we decided like, okay, we'll do this. We'll prepare the breakfast. You serve it. And we will be fast asleep at 8. Okay. Very nice. And people did it. And we said, we'll put everything in the fridge, all the cold stuff, all the cold cuts, everything's ready. We'll put the uh, porridge so that you'll just have to add. You, the water's heated up. You just heat it up and you add the oatmeal, etc. And then we forgot about it and went to sleep and woke up next morning, went there, started working on the lunch and the potatoes were missing. This is really common when you have a big kitchen. You miss things. You misplace things. I misplaced Tons of things, but 20 kilos of potatoes is not something that really misses that easily. So we wonder, like, where the hell are the potatoes? And, like, we just, because we were in a hurry, we just continued. We were having a 12-course celebratory meal because, oh, actually, it was the Queen's birthday in the game. But um, not at all planned for this. But um, then at some point, a person popped in into the kitchen, like, hello. I was like, hey. I'm going back to the game. Thanks for the food. Yesterday was really great. Breakfast was really great. Potatoes were a little raw. Thank you. And he just popped off. I'm like, the what now? <laughs> then I went to ask, like, did you put the potatoes out? Yeah, we did. The raw potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they all gone. People were hungry. <laughs> it was an outdoor game. They were walking a lot. 20 kilos of potatoes in water, no salt, raw. Yeah. <laughs> 20 bloody kilos. All gone. So from hence, I've never left potatoes unattended. <laughs> That's all. Thanks. Oh, two minutes spare. If somebody has a question.